911. My son had OD'd, and you know, and it's over here. Okay, I'm, what did he take? Okay. Uh, probably heroin. Do you want to live? Then you got to stop heroin. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I think there's a girl here ODing on heroin. She have a needle in her arm? Yes, she does. These are actual 911 calls made to the Evansville Vanderburg County Dispatch Center. It, it just seems like they're getting more and more. Dispatcher Carrie James is the person oftentimes at the other end of one of those calls for help. Sometimes it's the mother who's hysterical, or sometimes it's the small child who's found mom or dad, you know. So you have to listen to that and try to keep your emotions in check. Wake up, wake up, come on, come on. This is body cam video from one of those runs obtained by Eyewitness News that shows what first responders in the tri-state face more and more. We just met us another dose in our camp. This call placed to 911 was for a woman down at Kids Kingdom, a children's playground on the Evansville Riverfront. Now when we get people down, you know, the first thought through our mind is usually, well, it could be heroin. Wake up, wake up, come on. Sam, she's there. Her eyes are starting to open, but she's still out of it. Officers Dylan Powers and Arnie Yunker were the first to arrive on the scene. We rode along with the officers as they described the heartbreak they faced that day. Well, when we got there, uh, she was laying on her back. Her face was blue. She wasn't breathing. The officers say they knew this was a drug overdose and immediately administered three doses of Narcan, a medicine used to block the effect of opioids. Seeing somebody not breathing, face blue, because of this, just the number of doses you administered is pretty horrifying. But even more horrifying to these officers is the number of times yeah, this is happening now and who it's happening to. We've found them in bedrooms, we found them in playgrounds. A friend of mine that I grew up with and played sports with, uh, we got sent to an overdose right on him and he was a great athlete great kid and I mean, it, it doesn't discriminate it. So we have a narcotics epidemic, we have a heroin epidemic. Monty Bennett with the Evansville Police Department oh, says husband. unfortunately runs like this are becoming the norm more than the exception. It just becomes routine like you're like driving to work. Well I'm driving to work, I go the same way to work every day. Oh I got an overdose run, I'm going to, I'm going to another overdose run. and. The, the shock value is, is, is wearing off, and, and when the shock value wears off, that's a problem. The problem, Ginnon says, is that opioids are so strong, so addictive, that once a person starts abusing them, the harder it is to stop. For some, that addiction starts with a simple painkiller prescription from a doctor. Oftentimes after minor surgery, sometimes after major surgery. And once those pills run out, for some people, they will then run out to find a new way to get that high. My guess is we had most of these people already who were hooked on opioids, but they were in the painkiller pill form, and now that they're having a very difficult time getting that, they've turned to heroin. And Ginnon says as long as there's a demand for heroin on the streets, there's going to be a supply for it. It's finding that supply that's challenging for police. You start with your wee tips. You start with information from a person who is arrested, and then you try to work that up um, to where you can get to some people who are bringing in some bigger and larger sources. And once those sources are found, Ginnon says the suppliers have to be severely punished. But until those sources are found and those suppliers are punished, Ginnon says this will continue to be a community-wide problem and those calls for help will continue to come in here, the Evansville Vandenberg County Dispatch Center. So the more we can make the community aware, maybe the more we can catch the people that are selling stuff and you know, get rid of the, the problem. I started getting high, and um, by, being, by getting high, I started breaking the law. Um, by breaking the law, I started uh, stealing, started selling drugs again. I started hanging out with all the wrong people. Evansville native Anthony Burris is serving a nine-year prison sentence at the Branchville Correctional Facility in Perry County. That's on top of the 17 years he's already spent locked up for various offenses. At the age of 39, Burris says he made a promise to himself, the last time he got out of jail, to become a better person. He broke that promise just days later when a trip to the gas station for a pack of cigarettes led to a chance meeting with old friends and an old addiction. Those old friends offered me some drugs and I was off to the races after that. 
Burroughs says not only did he once again begin giving into his cravings and taking those drugs every day. I feel like I needed it. I had to have it. But he began selling them too, leading some of the people he loved the most to also become under the control of the powerful drug, heroin. I see a lot of close family members who are being, uh, who are addicted to drugs at this time, you know, and um, it hurts because I feel like, the, you know, some of them addictions might have came from me. Burris' addiction to heroin grew after he says life became more complicated. When there was a problem, he says heroin was always there to numb the pain. At the time, I thought I was helping myself with just solving one problem, but in all actuality, I was creating a thousand more. I thought I had my addiction under control. I was naive to the fact of uh, how fast it could suck me back in. Like Burris, Brian Leap is back in jail, this time serving a 20-year sentence after a repeat affair with drugs. I'm here for uh, dealing heroin. Leap is from Scott County, Indiana, a community thrown into the national spotlight for its rampant heroin use and HIV epidemic. That led to the county offering a free needle exchange program for its many heroin users. Looking back now, I realize that I was probably the main cause that most people were on it. Like many heroin users, Leap's addiction to the drug began shortly after he started abusing prescription pain pills. In Scott County, it was a, uh, you know, it was from the lure tabs to the Percocets to the Oxycontin to the Opana, then to heroin. Um, you know, some people took methadone, you know, uh, going to the methadone clinic. Um, but it all snowballed into heroin, you know, and before you know it, the whole town is on heroin. Because almost everyone he knew in his small community was using heroin, Leap says it seemed normal. In his mind, he says he wasn't doing anything wrong by offering it up for sale. I always thought that I had good morals and values, you know, um, that I wasn't selling to kids, that I wasn't selling to pregnant women, you know, and I would tell myself things, uh, it was my mind tricking me, you know, telling me that it was okay to, to be doing the things that I was doing. Today, while serving out their sentences in Branchville, both Leap and Burris have taken part in religious prison ministries. And from that, they say, they're learning how to live their lives drug-free. For Leap, he wants to now set a positive example for his five children. For Burris... And I feel like that I'm giving my mom the greatest gift I could possibly ever give her, and that's by beating this drug addiction. I found out that I couldn't trust myself. So I had to learn through trial and hardship that I can trust God. Gary Price's journey with drugs began and ended on the streets of Evansville. He started smoking pot at the age of 11. Shortly after, he started drinking beer, lots of beer. Like his father, he became an alcoholic. He had an apartment, but not much else. That apartment did not even have power, and he didn't have a car to get around. Gary Price decided he needed help and turned to Stepping Stones Recovery Center to help him battle his addictions. But even then, he felt he needed more. Enoch walked with God. So he walked. He walked from Stepping Stones to the McDonald's on Lincoln Avenue for a 6 a.m. Bible study class. Well, the truth is we need loving people to stand with us and especially when we fall down and the church has to be involved. Bethel Church's lead pastor, David Schwambach, oversees the ministry's Celebrate Recovery program, a program that introduces a spiritual component to healing. They've put around themselves relationships that have added, a, I'm going to say, encouragement, and uh, they've really embraced the faith-based community. Today, Gary and his wife, Carla, serve as leaders in the program, helping others just like themselves who are battling addictions. I'm joyful now. I'm fulfilled now. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I have love. I have joy. I have peace. I have people around me that love me, and it, it, it transformed my life. The withdrawals are just its the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life. It's awful. Whitney Heron is a recovering drug addict. Like many, her relationship with opioids started with a prescription from her doctor after she was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Shortly after that, her mother died from cancer, causing even more pain in her life. During that time, I really, I think that's when my abuse really started. 
The pills prescribed to her to curb the pain of arthritis, she says, also helped to numb the rest of the pain in her life. So she began to take more. Everything became an excuse to take an extra pill, and then an extra couple pills, and then a few pills, and then it just it spiraled before I had a hold of it. Leaving her scrambling at the end of the month when those pills ran out. In order to keep getting the highs she thought she had to have, she turned to buying pills from other people until she could get her next prescription filled. At the worst, um, I'd say I'd spend $150 a day. Easy. Which is insane. I was just, I was dying inside and miserable. Um, I ruined my family financially. You know, I came close to just bankrupting my family. In the end, she says it was her family who realized she had a problem and tried to help. I remember my dad saying, well, why don't you just quit? What's, you know, just stop it, put it down. You know, what's wrong with you? You know, you're not stupid, just stop. And I wish it was that, that simple. Heron tried quitting several times using different treatments. It wasn't until she says she hit rock bottom that she was able to conquer the grip of opioids. I was tired and I was ready, like I said, I just, I was ready to wave the white flag and just say, hey, somebody help, you know, what I've tried isn't working. I